So I'm going to try and capture a little bit of, um, I've mentioned about this in the previous video, when I'm talking about 10 breaths or values at the feet. So we're studying the feet better. Yeah. And, um, okay, foot. We'll study one. Uh, and I will represent because this seems like an odd position. I'm going to show one and then show another. So I will represent with my hand and where there is more specific, unless I come to a better, uh, um, another way of representing the matter. Right now, this is what I have in, in my idea of how to some way ma make the matter clear. Um, unless I have better resources, I just make the best use of available resources. Yeah. So in the previous video, mm -hmm. Uh, where I'm mentioning about the feet having 26 bones, one foot having 26 bones. Mm. There is English al <coughs> alphabets with 26 letters. Yeah. Um, so let's just keep it as a point of reference. And um, right now, when you're paying attention to your to your feet, foot, let's just pay attention to one or the other. Both feet have 26 bones each. Yeah. And five toes each. Yeah. Five toes. Five points of contact. One, two, three. Three points of contact. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. 10 points of contact. When you're placing your feet on the ground, notice how well your feet connect with earth along these 10 points. That's more for a uh, appreciation of um, contact, uh, sensitivity. How sensitive are you in being able to feel your feet in terms of these 10 points? Another collateral benefit happens to be that uh, you experience being more stable. That is, of course, when you can feel your feet in terms of these 10 points and notice how does these 10 points contact with earth. Now, if you're going to be wearing a, a slipper, yeah, um, you still have something to bounce off of, to place your feet on, but the benefits enhance when you place your feet, uh, contact your feet directly with earth, not on a carpet or on a slipper or on a um, um, what have you, um, socks yeah, or shoes without any of that. If you can directly contact the skin of your feet onto earth, it could be grass, it could be sand, it could be gravel. Um, they all have different textures and they will help improve the sensitivity, sensibility of your feet. The skin, the muscles, fascia, bones, they all have their own, there are, there are at least seven kinds of tissue that form your feet. Yeah. Um, they call as dhatus, seven dhatus. When we say 20, 24 bar seven, and our body already has seven kinds of tissue composition, yeah, different textures. Um, health is a rainbow, which you, you could say chakras, seven chakras, they say, but let's just say seven dhatus, and they have their own circadian rhythms, affect by circadian rhythms on each of these seven um, substance, yeah, substrate, you could say. Um, and according to the health of these seven substrates is also the health of a person's body. So chakra meditation, yeah, that translates differently in movementless yoga, yeah, healthy and natural breathing. Um, so I will try and capture a little bit in this video about what I mean by the uh, 10 values. 
Google uh, lists five values and five upavayus. Yeah. How they are understood in popular practices of yoga or Ayurveda um, may be different from how I'm talking about them here. They've been called as a dasha vayus. We have ashtanga yoga. Yeah. I'm talking in terms of dashanga because this method of yoga um, bounces off of the Shri Chakra and then the Merukamba or the Kubjika Mata, which is kind of like the dark matter, but a lot of it is unknown. It has been referred to as the Ratri or um, uh, that is from the dark and may not have been understood as well as it needs to be. It may even have been feared. Um, but we have life on earth. When we look at the gaze of the night sky, we see stars, we see planets, and we go, how I wonder what you are. And a large part of space is still being searched, looked for. Dark matter. We see space as dark matter. So a lot of the matter is dark and not known. Uh, and is still being inquired into what is dark matter. Um, so I'm talking in terms of the dark matter. While we know about what we know about as particle physics, for example, or wave physics, matter and energy, that is visible. And that is only visible when the sun is moving from sunrise to sunset. Otherwise, it's all dark. It's only as long as there's a, there's a sun moving from sunrise to sunset, we can see things. Otherwise, it's um, Kalaratri. The time is kind of dark. Yeah. So there are parts um, on Earth which do not experience sunrise, sunlight for significant parts of the day, yeah, uh, through the year, yeah. So we haven't heard about them because we may not have seen those news clippings about them or videos about them. So that's also possible. Nevertheless, um, say on a rainy day, dark clouds, you don't see the sunlight, but you kind of know, okay, there's some light, which is not like the moonlight or or, or a time when there is when there is no moon. Okay. So, uh, in that sense, the dark is always there. And then we have been practicing Hatha Yoga. Yeah? Ashtanga Yoga, uh, it has eight parts. The unknown bits that has an influence on yoga, on our experience of health, wealth, and wisdom, is um, what has been called as the Dasha Mahavidya. Yeah? Um, but... We already have the idea of the Dashavatara and the Dashami. So there's this idea of the 10. It's like base 10. Baseball, yeah, like base 10. Um, we already have numbers from 0 to 9, and then again from 10 to 19, and again from 20 to 29. So this, this pattern continues. This, this pattern of 10 continues in our number system. Um, and our bank balances speak about how much we pay attention to these zeros and we use these numbers in between and the decimal points too. So we have an existing system by which to understand yoga in, in the sense that when you're paying attention to health in, te in, in terms of progressively, there's a stepwise progress and there's a set, there are sets of them um, and there is infinite learning, infinite things to learn about. Then uh, you discover a discipline by which to stably, sustainably become healthy, wealthy, wise, um, and improve your longevity. Yeah. So we continue to have the benefit of um, being on the only planet for a very long time that we found life, uh, which supports life. And uh, in the grand scheme of things, there's a reason why things are this way and why we as humans have this golden opportunity to be alive on earth while there are things changing and there are you know, new new things coming about and no other planet has this benefit. So we are already um, a privileged lot for having life. So now let's get it, now let's get our health, wealth and wisdom sustainably becoming better. Like zero to nine to, yeah, we have lots of numbers. 
But let's just consider we at least are a zero. We would like to think about any of the numbers, our birthdays are there and many other, uh, many other uh, uh, numericals. But let's just consider we are at least a zero. Well, because let's just say the frog in the well, we're at least uh, having wellness enough to be zero. And then it's about, a, say, a bank balance. How many zeros do you have? Yeah. So how well are you doing? One way to look at it. Now from the zero, if you're going to, say, put a dot in the center, and then you're going to, uh, we did this yesterday, the last previous one. Okay. Now we have a compass. You have the pencil, yeah? Compass very finely connected with the pencil, yeah? And pencil is convenient because then you can erase, use an eraser. So you have a point of contact. And then we have, it's like we, the person, the center of the, who's a point, yeah? Who's, um, who could, you could say as, uh, like the microcosm, microcosm, it's a dot. You, you're at least a dot of a person. Yeah. And then we have a life. Let's just call that as a zero. We at least have one well. We are well enough to be alive. So we have the zero. And if you are at the center of this wellness, like frog in the well and right in the center. Yeah. So our feet would be touching the ground. So let's just say the ground zero, our feet is touching the center of the ground zero. And our feet have 26 plus 26 alphabets or other bones. So it's like uh, the English as a, as a language is structured by at least 26 bones, alphabets, yeah? And then, um, we have two feet, yeah, two legs, and uh, five toes each, 10 points of contact each, 10 points of contact. And we are aware of 10 values, yeah? So we have 10 points of contact to remember, and we have 10 values. Now these 10 values, they move in interesting ways, okay? There are different kinds of directions. There are different textures. There are different um, dynamics. Um, when you're paying attention to health of your feet in terms of these 10 values, life would be experienced quite differently than if you didn't. Now, you could say a tall claim or you could say claim. But we, we will, over the days, uh, discover one or the other aspect of these 10. Now, we have been studying numbers in some time, you know, since school time, and we have so many. But it's a still, still the 10 we, that we function by, yeah? Um, so we got lots to study, yeah? It's another 10, yeah? Yeah. Um, we could get quite lost in the scheme of things, but this is a 10 which has you be more found, yeah? You would have to make notes, of course, yeah? Because uh, something that something new that, that works, um, you would have to compare with, with what you've known, and then, so we, it's, an, it's a learning, it's an education system, yeah? Okay. The five values, okay? I will just call them out. The five values are the prana, apana, udana, samana, vyana. Uh, the five upavayus are listed as naga, kurma, devadatta, krikala, dhananjaya. Okay. Now these are popularly understood um, in their own ways. Uh, YouTube would have uh, videos about them. Yoga practitioners, maybe um, those who know about it, uh, about them would be speaking in terms of them. 
in their own uh, way how it's how they're understood um i will attempt my understanding of uh, of this um and how i practice uh, what i call as dasha mahavidya or um the way i understand it to maintain health so um ashtanga yoga in the presence of okay now the ashtanga that i'm talking about is in terms of the egyptian names yeah when you pay attention to the egyptian names yeah uh, this is um, i got to know that this eight has reference to in the shiva trilogy talks about um sati encountering um, an assassin from egypt yeah uh, who had their own practices of health um, their own practices of uh, um their thought lines yeah and uh, about what is right and what is wrong and and slightly different from our indian way of thinking yeah um so this bounces off of it's not all simple and straight as it seems so it's a little dark there yeah and uh, when you see the history of india and the influence from many geographical locations in the development of uh, india um how india came to be from gondwana land india took float yeah they said we searching for the garden of eden um but india took float yeah and um, um through the tethys ocean um increasing the gravitas of the matter yeah um to the point where there were uh, um lava displacing the what what the tethys ocean was uh, doing just went a little um increase the gravitas of the matter diffused with the land um the waters below um worked with kind of water digested water yeah so the, grav- the, the gravitas of the matter turned a little the other way yeah and uh, so india then goes and joins um asia and forms the himalayan ridges the shiva trilogy takes shape after that yeah and there are many cultural influences um across time space many civilizations that then uh, takes shape after this event so the shiva trilogy is talking about one of this in exchanges between india and egypt mesopotamia so when we look at the history of yoga and the development of it there are all these different influences there's a light significantly god and the devil yeah let's just say heaven and hell has been seen differently what one set of people have been calling as heaven has been the hell for the other and what has been seen as hell by one has been seen as heaven as the other, as the other. yeah so we call god or devil according to our perspective of which is heaven and which is hell yeah that's like the number 6 and 9 or you could say uh, there's gulliver's travels where there was um, a, a difficulty between which side of the egg was open was it the small of the small side or the big side of the egg so um, there's this idea of 6 and 9 so then we say who is right if you look in terms of 6 and 9 depends on which side of the number are you looking from yeah so consequently one call it heaven one call it hell and then we have religious concern or, or on what is god yeah uh, what is uh, religion what is uh, the right thing to do yeah um so all of this take shape in we have we are all practicing yoga and we have wh resistive diseases we have many methods of uh, healthcare uh inquiring into health wealth and wisdom and we have wh resistive diseases because there are these differences in in how we see things so in light of this is where i'm speaking about ashtanga yoga falling back on co-referencing from the egyptian eight the eight are uh, uh i've listed it just kind of um uh, in a particular order but we will 
pay attention to them as and how we are more readier to appreciate the matter because they have a, have their own gravitas uh, listed as chaos gaia tartarus eros uh, erebus hemera nix ether okay and i have kind of given it a name an english connotation for it yeah so, because it makes sense to me i call chaos as uh, nirbija yeah gaia as earth tartarus as hell uh, eros as love erebus as darkness uh, hemera as day nix as night ether as unknown yeah i had i've been bouncing all of these ideas in in one way or the other and i keep uh, improving and refining as new information comes and it's like a a jigsaw puzzle you think oh it's a, it's an elephant and then there's a new piece that comes it's it's like we have a standard model of particle physics a new piece of information comes and then you examine how this uh, stands good over many uh, spheres of influence that has emerged since the standard model of particle physics was formed and then according to how, how they sustainably stand without uh, causing clashes or if they significantly impact the whole um, uh, system of how we're looking things that's when we change the model yeah so uh, we have this eight and in in connection with the uh, values 10 values yeah these words uh, what i call the five values and five upavayus yeah um they would have to be understood in terms of the egyptian 82 because language sanskrit um yeah sanskrit um we call it as sanskrit we pronounce it one way some people call it as sanskrit yeah uh, we have um indo european group of languages so our languages have, have taken shape from many origins so we have sanskrit we have greek we have egyptian uh we have hebrew dravidian so let's just say there is uh, um some of the information that i uh, put together which i call as uh, mayis let's just say there are three origins one is the vedic um the other uh, the other is uh, dravidian and the other is um hebrew yeah because i happen to meet these three languages so i've been studying in terms of these um there are uh, other languages also related from there for example there's uh, arabic uh, i read the english translation i'm yet to read uh, understand the language of it uh, there's bengali there's hindi there's uh, kannada there's there's so many other languages and they are all i over found over time i found they're all related so when you look at these 10 words from this appreciation of language in terms of at least the dravidian vedic and hebrew then our understanding of these phrases yeah uh, and how yoga is practiced changes yeah and gets more finer it gets more complexer um and then you'll be able to understand hebrew uh, which has 22 alphabets alphabets in a way that is that makes sense as a human language yeah um and how they play out with uh, say uh excuse me the indian classical um set of words vowels consonants combinations which has a fall back on the katapayadi sankhya yeah um so that's another wheel that uh, we would be looking into in understanding yoga what does language have to do with yoga we have this idea of annamaya kosha pranamaya kosha manonmaya kosha uh, vignanamaya kosha anandamaya kosha now these are words labeling five aspects five sheets so to speak or five layers um just like we have one body that's human and then we talk in terms of heart lung liver pancreas names but it's all part of the one body why do we need so many so many names it helps us identify 
that we are talking about say oblis or we are talking about o lungs and um or we are talking about o breath so if we're going to categorize these words under particular labels and particular headings it becomes easier for us to it's like wikipedia you search for one word and then you search it uh, you go to a particular word it could be highlighted in blue to you know, to say that there is further information on it you click on it it, it opens something else click something on opens and you can put it all back together and you can appreciate the matter so you can have an overview to oh this is a tree of how things show up yeah similarly yoga is an integrative math yeah or rather there are there are several facets to it there is encrypted information or information since when inquiry about being healthy wealthy wise began say we were um apes yeah there are different evolutionary stories that also says one of our ancestors were, were apes yeah we have a tail tucked inside our body that says we at least have a uh, um an ape origin yeah a line of development and then since then we have uh, been facing say warring tribes and then disease and then many kinds of challenges and then you say when you do this more often there are more people alive than dead yeah so over time there have been many practices that evolved so we are more benefited more on this side of life and then uh, over time we have hospitals and we have uh, administration system we have computers and we have so many professions to be able to support life and now we are not having so many warring tribes so we know then we, that also does happen but we are working towards there being more peace and less disease and concerns yeah so which means over time there have been improvement yeah and over time has also been the evolution of language over time how we practice yoga has also been improving um there have been many schools of yoga that has come about yeah um and it's it, it's a it's a continuously improving process in that sense we are learning how to incorporate include in such a way that there are no clashes just like we've had warring tribes earlier that's because there are sets of information which may not be compatible there may be contradictions and then there's a clashes which has been called as kleshas in yoga when we see our own body as composing as a uh, physical emotional intellectual spiritual consciousness logical thinking you know, irrational thinking or intuitive thinking and there are things we know there are things we don't know and incorporating information in such a way that there are no contradictions because if then there is there are diseases yeah because the mind is is the contradicting with the physical experience of it with the intellectual and spiritual for example um then that that, le that leads to dissonance a lot of noise yeah not as healthy sound mind is associated with quiet and calm and thinking clearly versus jangle jangle yeah so the idea of yoga as slowly incorporating material in such a way that there are less and less contradictions less and less kleshas and there comes a better integration of the material such that we are having more peace more health more wellness we have zeros yeah so it's like uh, like a pizza we have veggies so one bit of information oh this veg belongs to this pizza not to that pizza yeah so there is sorting of the material and then we arrive at so these are all this is how it's all related it's like a watch watch has many wheels and they all have their own roles to play in the schema of a watch yeah so a body similarly uh, has been refer this this is idea of the body clock several physiological processes function by many wheels many cyclical processes functioning in their own ways so when you say a body has um, seven dhatus seven kinds of substrate that then gives rise to rainbow spectrum of um hallucinations quality of health yeah uh, we have um, 
um, gender spectrum, autism spectrum, and seven colors of the rainbow, seven sounds of music, and you kind of, there's this idea of the Saptarishis, yeah? So that's also talking about uh, Lord Manu, you know, one, one person, one human, like say from after the Noah's Ark, one human lands on, um, um, steps on land, and then from there begins a culture, yeah? So there's this idea of O7 that would also come from the seven substrate. So there's also this idea of Vata Pitta Kapha, which means some people have some composition more uh, in a particular um, intensity, um, gravitas, than, than another. And consequently, we have so many kinds of people. So we come to three, Vata Pitta Kapha at least, seven, um, seven colors of the rainbow, seven substrates. There's also five, yeah? This idea of the uh, Olympic, uh, Olympic circles, the logo of it has five circles. Yeah. Two, three, and then four, five. Yeah. So um, Panchanga Veda, in terms of Indology, they're also talking about O5. There's this idea of the circle of fifths. Yeah. So there are some wheels we will be bouncing off of. Um, Katapayadi Sankhya comes from, it's another wheel such, a, such as that. Yeah. A body is functioning by so many physiological processes. There are many wheels. Um, the heart functions in a particular rhythm that is different from the digestive system's rhythm, which is different from the respiratory system's rhythm. If we think of these rhythms in terms of three kinds, yeah, I've tended to call it as the heartbeat, the lung beat, and the life beat. Why I say this is the heartbeat has a certain substance that the, is a muscular kind of a substance, yeah, and uh, uh, is of a particular composition because of cardiac muscle, yeah. There is, and then there is striated muscles, then there is smooth muscles, and the combination of them forms a cardiac muscle, which is a combination of these two, yeah. So there are rhythms there, which is different from the lung beat. Are Lungs, there's an inhalation and exhalation. An asthmatic patient, a person with asthmatic health challenges, breathe in a way, in a rhythm that is different from that of a person who do not have asthma. Yeah. So there are, say, pneumonia and many other con uh, conditions. Related with the lungs, there are different kinds of rhythms. And over um, my... Uh, studies um, in becoming a clinical health facilitator, practicing biodynamic craniosacral therapy, a biodynamic method of healthcare, I discovered our lungs, the respiratory patterns of our lungs is a secondary re respiratory rhythm, where the respiratory pattern in the womb of the mother has been called as a primary respiration. And primary respiration from inside the womb of the mother continues to be there even when we are born out of uh, mother's womb. So the lungs are breathing. And then there is the primary respiration that forms our human body, and which is also required to maintain the human body. So you could say, um, okay, so that is respiratory rhythm, lung, breath, lung beat. Yeah. So it becomes interesting when the lung beat, if it's identified that way, um, and then the primary respiration, you could say life beat, because it has many kinds of rhythms there. But this is again topical kind of um, just categorization um, in terms of, because there are three kinds of textures here kind. But it's not just three, there are many more. If we take off these labels, as heartbeat, lung beat, and life beat, then you have rhythms. Uh, you could say Annamaya Kosha, Pranamaya Kosha, Manonmaya Kosha, Vignanamaya Kosha, Anandamaya Kosha. If we look at these realms of thinking from outside these names, you would probably call some other names for them. So different people may be appreciating this matter in their own way. So for example, pranic healing, uh, pranic healers, they may be seeing this matter from their own way of looking at it. Reiki people may be having their own names. Um, martial arts people may be calling them their own names. Um, 
it's about what we see as more important versus another. Yeah. And then um, that would also depend on, say, the vata, pitta, kapha. We have predominance of one versus the other. So some people are more intellectually oriented. Some people are more uh, uh, breath-based oriented. Some are more uh, body-based oriented. So accordingly is um, what you base your life by. What is your profession? Uh, what is the how you add value to the whole scheme of things or what you fight or don't fight based on what you regard as important versus not. Um, and we're all on the same planet Earth. Yeah. So I'm talking in terms of the human body composition in terms of there are so many rhythms and then there are we have many uh, labels, lungs, heart, um, secondary respiration, primary respiration, yeah? um, rhythms, we call it as body clock. And then we understand circadian rhythms as a body clock being affected by the sunlight or the moonlight. And how I understand circadian rhythms is there are cyclical processes. A body has many physiological processes. There are cyclical processes. And they are affected by many things. It could be the sunlight, moonlight, um, gadgets around, um, the body clock rhythms of one human being versus another human being. So if you're sitting in a room of a room full of people where their clock is, uh, their body clock is functioning at, at their own pace, rhythm, according to their own health, our rhythms could get affected by theirs. And if you're not regularly um, paying attention to recalibrating our own uh, body rhythms, things could get a little out of sync. It's like a clock, which needs to be regularly paid attention to, to. So it's functioning appropriately. Now you have a clock to check. Oh, you know, this is five minutes down slow or going fast. And then you can recalibrate. But what is your point of reference? By which you know, if your rhythms are functioning fine, if you're not going into menopause or fertility concerns or your, your heart rhythm is not functioning as much, do you notice, oh, there's a certain defibrillation? Yeah, or is it, uh, arrhythmia? Yeah, or you're having a little asthma. Yeah, or you're having a little muscle spasm, which means the rhythms are going a little like that. The rhythm has gone a little off. When they are all functioning in a particular way, which is this inhalation, exhalation, and that stuff, I'm talking in terms of breath. So when we consider 10 values, and we just call vayu as breath then I'm referring to there is a rhythmic pattern to it. And when our body is functioning by there's rhythmic pattern to them, and when these, these different wheels, say of a body clock, yeah, we consider our body to be a clock with many wheels, many cyclical processes, circadian rhythms. Cyclical processes, circadian circle rhythms. Then how we look at health, how we look at yoga, how we look at what is possible from minding our own business, because the whole business of living is happening from our body. Yeah. Um, so then we would be paying attention to our microcosm, while the macrocosm is say God and creator. So we'd be working more in tandem yeah, um, with the, the macrocosm. So now we have uh, the Andromeda galaxy in different stages of merging with Milky Way galaxy. Yeah. So when such is a matter, we would be appreciating these different rhythms in tandem with, oh, today's day is this way. The sun has risen at in this angle, sunrise from the east. And then um, as, the, as the sun moves um, across the sky to sunset, it has these different different effects on our body. And then, so life becomes possible to be lived from the moment, in this moment. And that requires to, to notice what is happening in our body's body clock, the circadian rhythms of our, of our physiology, the composition of our body make. As, for example, at least the sun moving across the sky, there are many changes happening around. It takes awareness, Mindfulness, present moment, appreciation. Now I say appreciation because we, we may be more used to complaining. Oh, this is not working. This is there. This is not there. Yeah. 
uh, and what is there also you have a complaint with that you know so not as perfect as it needs to be in it takes something to appreciate yeah of course there are moments when things are not working and you're screaming and ranting and raving yeah but if you're more appreciative of what's there you're you're more likely to notice things in perspective and not just say a problem 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 to a problem this problem has a solution there that solution applied here that's one problem less this problem next problem yeah the next problem has maybe you need to do so many steps before this problem gets resolved you work on one at a time and then that problem is is resolved now next and you're not, you're not going <gasps> chaos yeah chaos is uh, said to be unknown order so when we are appreciating our body in terms of these 10 values let's work from the feet up because our body is made up of several circadian rhythms body clocks so several several processes um it's an entire study it's going to take some time because you know how many numbers do you have you know zero to infinite yeah we can keep studying because uh, i'm talking about 10 values at the feet itself we can be talking in terms of 10 values at one toe how we understand these uh values um has needed a little relook in some time yeah so you'd say sexy finger, yeah. So Dashamaha Vidya has been associated in many ways. But um, um, even in a little finger also, yeah, there are seven substrates. And when these seven substrates are frictioning against each other, uh, according to circadian rhythms, then sometimes Sukha Dukha could also have a little... The sex drive, the itch you can't um, you can't really scratch. Um, having a bath regularly helps because at least you you would be able to bring some relief, yeah. But because there are these seven um, substrates that forms different parts of a body, including a little finger, one toe, and then I'm saying ten values, ten metabolic processes. Uh, by which the health of each part of the body must be maintained. Because uh, your heart could be all functioning well, but that little toe needs a little care. Because otherwise the, the rhythms, they all need to function. It's like an orchestra. The body like got several instruments. Yeah. So healthy natural breathing is healthier metabolism also. Yeah. And also a fine rejuvenation, uh, recalibration, um, Maintain the youthfulness, yeah. Uh, maintain the spunk and spark that originally has you be you, improvingly, getting better. Otherwise, you could get lost in the whole things. You could get entangled. And then you don't know yourself from others. And you'll say, oh, human, you know, oneness. Yeah. We all have our own zero, our own body. Yeah. We all have one life. Yeah. Our own body. That's talking about we have one body. And then we have so many people in different composition of the human body. So let's maintain our one body life well enough. And then it's like the central pole of the circus. Yeah, circus tent. That's the central pole. So we are like that one pole um, taking care of the health of our life. When we are the central pole is functioning well enough, the circus of life is more likely to be running because you care enough about the whole circus of life. Yeah. So whether or not somebody else, else knows, uh, don't know, lack of perspective, care, cannot care. So all of these differences are there. At least you care about, well, just about everything. What, you care about many things. So as long as you care, those things are going to be fine and safe. So let's maintain our own body composition so we can continue to care because that's one concern, yeah, which nobody else will have to then worry about because you're all fine becoming healthy, wealthy, wiser. So it could be a child, it could be a plant, it could be an animal, it could be a country, it could be earth, it could be the whole wide universe, multiverse, 
They're all going to be fine. They'll become better. Yeah. So let's continue to care enough. So our care do not do not go sour. Yeah. And um, all will be well. All continues to become better. Yeah. So I will pause for now. And um, okay, I'll talk talk about one of the values. Yeah, because it's a. Uh, it is not how you may actually notice uh, the matter, but I will try and give a little peek on the matter. Okay, God help us. Yeah, because uh, prana. Google says the basic value from which the other values arise is the vital life force in breath and oxygen and affects mood, emotions, and state of mind. I find that a lot like reductionism. Yeah, but okay, that's a comment. But how I understand prana is, um, now I am going to have to refer to Mai's. There's a there's a video put up on my channel, um, you know, um, Mai's alphabets. So the P according to that, yeah, like I said, the the alphabets that I've, uh, by which I, I call it as my conscience, yeah. Um, I put this over, studying many languages and many cultures and religions and schema of things, yeah? Uh, everybody have our own perspective on the matter. So I've arrived at this alphabet system of, as information came together, yoga has been happening. So mm -hmm. things begin to come together and at some point they begin to start mattering, materializing from just, oh, just mind. They say mind of the matter. My, it's just mind. So before they could form body, um, you know, matter, there is this coming together and then there's a com combination of them in particular. It's like the planets form. So there are particles. And over time, when there's a gravitas of the matter, they come together in particular combinations and form and we have different planets. Yeah. And Earth is one planet who has managed to keep the gravitas of, gravitas of the matter in such a way that life showed up. Yeah. And then life has been evolving over time. So Earth has been continuing to uh, maintain the gravitas of the matter in a way that is conducive for life, yeah? So prana, how I understand, from having seen this, this, thing, this thing happening about earth and about yoga and all of that. So I recommend you look at that video. I'll put a link to that video on in the description of this one. Prana, the P is like the peeves. There's a reason for coming into existence. Something worked or didn't work in the previous lifetime. And so, and now we are born to, we are like a reincarnation reinca from past lifetimes. It's like this idea of the sky people, avatars, you know, born um, with a reason for coming into existence. Yeah. Um, like an employee. Yeah. You, you only are permitted in the organization if you meet certain qualifications. Yeah. And uh, you you are more suited in, say, accounts or computers or administrations or security, according to what is your internal composition, what is what is your caliber for. So we say vata pitta kapha. Some people have more vata, some people more kapha, some more pitta. Yeah. Um, and accordingly is your internal strengths, your strengths, weaknesses, SWOT analysis, you could say. Yeah. So P is like the peeves. You have your pet peeves. You have a complaint with life and you or something, and then you love complaining about that and then keep your at it. Yeah. So what is it that bothers you really? Would be a place where you will find, you will say dukkha, but it's something that you cannot stop talking about. Yeah. So you will find something that has you keep going on yeah so you'll find a tick yeah that keeps you going on so that's like a, your pet peeve r is like that which emerges from the pet peeve so you could be saying you love doing this and so you're in securities you love doing this and so you're in uh, admins yeah uh, so you love doing this so you're a cook for example yeah so that which emerges from your pet peeves. Ana 
yeah the a of it's like uh, it's a little like sex yeah um your relationship with your own self self improvement happens according to how much you work with you could say um orgasm but it's more like um through the work you're doing it's a bit like uh, masturbation yeah why i say this is you're stimulated but you also continue to keep working on it because there's something that works there's something that doesn't. you your pet peeve continues to show up in the work that you're doing because you human beings are a body is formed from when i say seven dhatus yeah shukra is one of the dhatus and shukra has been related with with semen which means there's a certain libido about our composition so libido is a libido and destrudo um our words from sigmund freud's um way of thinking yeah conscious subconscious and conscious um so there's a certain libido in this and that which um is more pro life for life and destrudo is against yeah um is like uh, pro uh, pro creation and then you no know, okay pros and okay um creation pro creation and then destruction yeah the libido libido destrudo so that which has you keep going forward has a certain um sexiness to it yeah there's a certain mucusy to it it's all figured out not really figured out but you you would continue with that it's like you have a ship and it's kind of foggy there's something that that keeps you going on about there's something that you see in it but not really clear but there's some it's still nicer to be in this work cooking for example admin computers which you're not finding from others and that keeps you going so there's a certain prana to it yeah why i say ana prana is like a, that's also like a baby's a baby's born from natural birth is you know, to the vaginal canal yeah so we are we we are born from one of the holes so it's not prana it is prana and the n is a na na is alluding to hole okay so our skin has so many pores through also where sweat comes out a body has at least 10 holes through which different kinds of fluids come including poop and pee and um reproductive fluids yeah there's also nose two holes here eyes ears mouth so that covers 10 to uh 4 6 8 yeah okay 2 4 5 6 7 so 7 here itself yay yeah and then you have three in between the legs and then her skin has so many pores when are seven dhatus are rubbing against each other according to circadian rhythms they create a certain sexiness yeah which we need to regularly they they create different kinds of secretions from there and then we need to digest the processes it's like landfills if you don't regularly clear the matter it's like a body is like a production house there our ideas are there we eat food and then different tissues are forming so that's there's the poiesis forming of new cells to cells tissues organs organ systems regular maintenance uh, so you would say stem cells yeah so our body is not made just only of stem cells there's also red blood corpuscles muscles and different tissues different cells so creation is is a is a screwy process it goes through screws yeah circadian rhythms there are cyclical processes they, they call it a life cycle so regularly moving maintains the composition the tonicity of our different systems yeah so prana is uh, one of them yeah no i say that is it's like asking which of these fingers is important all of them are equally important because they each have their own role to play in the whole scheme of things fingers yeah things become possible when we are functioning with all of these processes 
Now, this I'm talking about fingers. There are people with and without fingers. Yeah. And they have a body that's human. Yeah. So, an alive person has head, neck, trunk, at least with the pelvis, and plus or minus limbs. Yeah. So, maintaining, so these 10 values are present in every part of the body, in an alive person. And as we improve upon them, is, is when we maintain the substance, the stretchiness, yeah, the thrivability, not just surviving, living, thrivability, yeah. So we will begin from the feet. You could also, a lot of people have feet, yeah. So we'll begin from there. Um, so we will talk to sizes of people and then slowly we'll come to the human composition i could start from the head but then um let's get our hang on the ground of the matter so when i'm talking in terms of the 10 values even those who don't have feet you can at least pay attention in terms of these 10 values and um in terms of that part that part of your body which touches the ground as your muladhara or ground zero no way yeah so I'll have to make another one with this 10 values. We're going to keep talking about this for some time. Yeah. Because oh, I can just talk about the P itself. Yeah. So Galats. And Apana, do you want to go there? Because oh, do you just talk about one of them? Yeah. You can write Sri Adi Shankaracharya wrote 10 books. Yeah. So he knew something. Yeah, and then there was a little concern with uh, uh, attachment to things, I suppose. Yeah, because he was still attached to the idea of Krishna. Um, and he probably had to further contemplate on the matter. Yeah, so um, we're going to be talking about this for some time. So I'll just leave us with the thought about prana. Um, so it's pra okay, prana is not the basic value from which other values arise. In that sense, there is a reason for coming to existence and hence from there. It's listed as one of the values. Yeah, it's really, it needs to be seen in perspective that way. Because otherwise you'll come into a hierarchical system and then you are again losing the gravitas of the matter of each. Then um, we have Apana. I'll just read it out here. I don't agree because it's severe reductionism of the matter. And it's just like, oh, this much. Yeah. Um, Apana has said as, do you want to go there? Because there's a lot of information. So I'll just pause here. Or I can just read it out. So you can kind of think about the matter. Okay. I, uh, in terms of my appreciation of the matter, I need to say that I'm not seeing these values as five values and five upavayus but as equally important they're having um different functions and um they have their own roles but we like the number five yeah so let's stay with the five and then we will say another five um but um we could get stuck in numbers to go beyond numbers when we say uh, there's this idea of 72 lakh nadis yeah and i'm thinking it's still numbers how many will you count yeah we have 10 numbers yeah let's let's stick with thin as the biggest number yeah and then we basically to maintain frog in the well it's about When you eat morsel by morsel, you can also eat the whole cake. Yeah. So we'll just maintain the one zero. And then uh, we have many zeros. We have no problems with many zeros in a bank. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll take care of this one zero. And then we'll appreciate this in terms of 10 numbers. You have uh, my video that I call as my conscience. You got 10 spheres. Yeah, I got 12 there. There's actually more. So that may all seem like big. Yeah. So we'll start from one 
Think of the matter. One dot and one circle. Yeah? You and your life. You as in own oh, nothing and everything. Why I say nothing is you're at least zero. You know, it's also been called as O oh, zero. Yeah? Like, uh, you don't like zero. We like some numbers there. You can say oh, zero, nothing. It, zero is also for infinite. You've got lots of numbers when you have, you call it infinite. So let's call the dot as nothing. And the entire life, all that there is, is everything. So from there, we will get our prana, uh, apana, udana, samana, vyana, naga, kurma, devadatta, krikala, dhananjaya. We got lots of body part names also. We got so many. And then I'm, when I'm saying my conscious, we have so many names there. We will handle with all these different, different variations and religion and countries and then languages and so many quantities. And then you say quantum physics. Yeah. So there is a known and unknown and weird and then particle physics and lots of dots. Yeah. So how to contain the matter? Incorporation in such a way that we are, we are not having faced with jangle, jangle clashes. Um, so while we don't have warring clans, at least in our own body, in our, in our own understanding of the matter, you shouldn't go to, oh, information overload. That's also like saying you've eaten food and you need to digest the matter. Yeah, otherwise, you have it as uh, it's just there, constipation, diarrhea. Yeah, so information overload, you can't take anything more because you need to digest that matter. Yeah, so how to do that? is also what I'm calling as uh, movementless yoga. So we have these 10 values by which to also digest information in such a way that there is no clashes. So one of the statements I've been functioning quite often by is there are no contradictions in life. What there is, is a lack of perspective. So how to get to that perspective where there is no clashes also requires you digesting the information to see the premises and then see which is true which is false so there's a discernment about it so how to do that is also part of movementless yoga healthy natural breathing yeah so thank you so much for your uh, um, kind attention your interest uh, do contact me and we will be able to work together uh, faster in a way that makes sense for you because uh, you are a uniquely different person from your neighbor your family member your father mother uh, siblings uh, so how you process information uh, would be different from, say, a, a, anybody else. And then we can also work in groups um, because that's like, well, it's like a, a family gathering. Yeah, we are different kinds of balls in one under one roof. Yeah. So um, we'll work. So we are all humans. So I've, then I'll be speaking in two humans. So that's how I'm speaking in this video. And then there is uh, individual health concerns. So I'll be able to work with that. So um, work with your specific challenges and concerns. So do contact me and do let me know uh, how this works for you. Uh, if this makes sense, uh, I should make smaller videos. But sometimes you need to just, just speak the elephant in the room. So then there is an ease of, you know, okay, now there's this water here. And then over time, it's like the river flows. And over time, there's this... Uh, the pathway of the river and then, you know, what is possible. Yeah. So um, the idea of Manu and the seven Saptarishis. Yeah. So your body has seven uh, substrate and then how this would be interpreted would be according to some people are more intellectually oriented, some more uh, breath ways oriented, some more um, uh, oh, spirituality related. And yeah, so we are likely to see many variations of this. At least that's... Um, what history of humankind talks about because uh, we have seven the Saptarishis and then we have uh, uh, Vedas and uh, understanding of it in so many ways so that makes it very interesting so I'm like being like Bharatwaj you know, it's like Bharat and then oh flag oh we have a new here yeah you know? so um, as in Dwaj as in the flag yeah you know? so we have Excuse, excuse. Okay, so thank you so much for your uh, interest. Good day.